Hey guys, it's Kira. We are going over Rappuccini's Daughter, which is in section four, the first story of section four, and I believe it is the longest story. Um, and it is written by Nathaniel Hawthorne. It um, is obviously one of our stories that touches on humanity and technology. So, Rappuccini's Daughter is con considered part of like the overall gothic architecture genre. It has a lot of layers, so this video definitely won't be very long, but it will try and hit on as many points as I can without this being stupidly long. So, the story starts off with a um, young college age student. His name is Giovanni. He is kind of just moving into his dorm. The story is set in about the 1600s, so get into that mindset. 1600s, young man living in a new place. Um, his little apartment dorm thing um, is overlooking a garden. So from his window, he notices this kind of like old, sickly, frail, spooky looking dude who is moving cautiously through a garden and then he calls out for Beatrice. And it's in a shakily, like a shaky and like sickly kind of voice. And Giovanni immediately is like, oh, he's probably sick. And in response to this, Beatrice is um, described immediately as just this like beautiful, almost divine figure to Giovanni. He like sees her and it's instant like, kind of need to know who she is. Like, I want to meet her. And she, um, it says she looked redundant with life, health, and energy, all of which attributes were bound down and compressed, as it were, and grindled tensely in their luxuriance by her virgin zone. So she is like the ideal picture of like health and energy and all of these things. And, um, that's kind of interesting. Um, so keep that locked away. Um, that that description of health and energy is very, very interesting. Um, so Giovanni then sees Beatrice kind of go through the garden with no caution, unlike her father. And she goes up to um, a really, really beautiful garden plant that kind of stands out from all the rest of them. And she calls this plant her sister. Which is incredibly strange because I mean, I've never met anyone who likes to call plants their sisters. I, I don't do that. I don't think any of you guys have done that. Um, so that kind of, that kind of stands out. And doesn't really seem to stick with Giovanni as something, you know, a little strange, a little unusual. I don't know if everybody was doing that in the 1600s. Was that like a trend? I don't think so. Um, but it's something that stands out to us as readers, but not really to Giovanni for some reason. And um, there's sort of, Giovanni has like a dream and that's used as a literary reference to Dante's Divine Comedy and to the Bible in a, in, uh, in a sense. And he's dreaming about how the flower and Beatrice are different, but the same. And there was something that just like connected them and he just didn't know what it was. And um, the use of that literary device kind of is thrown in by Hawthorne to see if you'll catch it and to kind of just test us as readers to see if we can grab onto that. Um, and then we, we kind of get insight through this to see that Rappuccini is presented to us as a serious scientist, but the things that he's doing and the ideals he has are insane to us in current day, but really weren't back then. So throughout the story, Hawthorne kind of sneaks in little bits of that, that mentality of what women were, what women were supposed to be doing, and things like that throughout his story. Um, this kind of shows again when um, later on Giovanni is curious about the garden and the girl, and um, he kind of like, just kind of like whatever like that's kind of weird that's kind of cool but then throughout the story it gets more intensive it it starts as a simple curiosity but then kind of 
picks up and becomes a sort of obsession um and then through his father he's able to be introduced to Baglioni who's a professor of medicine at the university that Giovanni is studying at and Baglioni warns that while Rappuccini is you know a really really brilliant scientist or a man of science he is like totally heartless and um probably wouldn't be somebody that you want to you know go say hi to um and Baglioni tells Giovanni that Rappuccini has um so well schooled his daughter that she could be a professor herself which makes her almost more rare and unique um thinking of the time period because not only does she have these strange physical qualities and strange things like that but she's incredibly intelligent and obviously in the 1600s women were not professors we didn't have the first full professor um that was a female in the united states until 1871. so obviously beatrice would have not been able to be a professor which is obviously unfortunate but um we can see that Beatrice obviously has a very deep love for her father's garden and she takes care of it as if it is her life force like it is what she's here for and Giovanni at one point throws a, um, a bouquet of flowers to her and as she picks it up all of the flowers wither and so Giovanni is kind of just like with like this mix of horror and it draws him in more so um as the story goes on he just finds himself unable to turn away from her and um in the literature guide it says partly a horror story partly a love story Rappuccini's daughter is also a cautionary tale not only about man's untoward interference in nature but also about how true goodness is not corruptible um and Baglioni starts to kind of sense the obsession that Giovanni has with the girl and he also feels um a little bit protective over Giovanni so Baglioni um is trying to like warn him and um we can see my dog's bark um we can see that Baglioni immediately thinks that he's like being studied in a way or like he's getting put into like basically a science experiment so he's like yeah you should probably watch out because you're definitely going to be part of something you don't want to be part of and Giovanni kind of brushes it off he doesn't really care he bribes the housekeeper into revealing a hidden path into the garden and he meets Beatrice kind of like in person for the first time there and then they start meeting like every day which for this time period was not normal unless you guys were like unless he would have been courting her so this wasn't like an everyday thing it just like happened like you didn't just hang out every day unless you were like planning on getting married so um Giovanni eventually like as spending more time together starts to be like wait what if I am getting experimented on and then he like kind of freaks and goes to Baglioni who then informs him that Beatrice has been the subjects of her has been a, the subject of her father's experiments her entire life and that she embodies a fatal poison but she might still be rescued by her father so um Giovanni well first of all Baglioni gives Giovanni a like antidote like a medicine he's like you take some of this you know because you're being affected by it and then give some of it to like to your girl you know um and part of why Giovanni freaked out is because he breathed on like a spider that like withered it so he's like oh I'm like totally getting experimented on and it's totally all this girl's fault um and so he's like oh my gosh I can't believe you do this to me and he goes to confront 
Beatrice and she's like I like didn't even mean to do anything like I just wanted to hang out like I didn't, I didn't do anything and um to be quite honest this study guide doesn't really touch on how mean Giovanni was to Beatrice like he was tearing into her like I don't like Giovanni because Giovanni was being a real big jerk to my girl Beatrice I, I'm feel, I feel for Beatrice like I feel bad for her but just because she's trying to like kind of prove something to Giovanni she downs the entire flask of antidote to prove her innocence and then like as she's chugging it like she like just finishes chugging it her dad walks out um and he like doesn't really care that Giovanni's there he's like oh cool my weird poisonous daughter has like a weird poisonous boyfriend now that's like whatever and Beatrice is like dude why would you do this to me and Rappuccini her father has the audacity to be like what do you mean like this is the best possible outcome for you he says and I quote what mean you, foolish girl? Dost thou deem it misery to be endowed with marvelous gifts against which no power nor strength could avail an enemy? Misery to be able to quell the mightiest with a breath. Misery to be as terrible as thou art beautiful? Wouldst thou then have preferred the condition of a weak woman, exposed to all evil, and capable of none? So, um, you know, let's just say Repuccini is not very progressive. He's, he's he's not the vibe he's not giving what he needed to give it's it's not what we needed and um through this we definitely get to see like hawthorne revealing this like 19th century perspective on like femininity and that like women are weak susceptible to evil but not capable of evil like all you can like all women could do was sit there and just just take the bad stuff that was happening like they can't do anything about it so um obviously you know most people don't really think that anymore um but we we see that Beatrice legit like she wanted the best for herself she wanted the best for Giovanni like she just she liked them she liked having company around you know and she dies um because she has been so altered by her father that the antidote kills her instead of curing her um and she literally like she, she she drops dead she drops dead at the feet of Giovanni and her father and um right before she dies she kind of yells out to Giovanni and Repuccini and by implication to Baglioni because he's there at this time. Was there not from the first more poison in thy nature than in mine? So, um, kind of like the theme of the story is pretty clear in that it is humankind has to be careful when they're meddling with nature and things that are untouched by man. Um, and that to play God is always a dangerous game. So to try and play some divine figure who has control over all, um, never really ends up well. We see that in history. We see that in current day. We see that literally every day. You have no control over really anything but what you do. So if Rappuccini would have, you know, not poisoned his daughter, from the get-go, she probably could have lived a normal life, could have done something with her intelligence as a woman in the 1600s, which, I mean, would have been limited, but it could have been possible. But she didn't have that opportunity, not only because she was a woman, but because um, the one thing that everybody thought would help her uh, ended up killing her. So, as Beatrice collapses, Baglioni cries out from Giovanni's window, Rappuccini, Rappuccini, and is this the upshot of your experiment? So Baglioni basically, is, he, he's beaten a dead horse. I think Rappuccini at this point knows, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But Baglioni doesn't like Rappuccini. They've had the feud forever. So he's like, dude, 
like you messed up like I kind of like you, you did that like that's tough and um the narrator tells us that Beglioni kind of cries this out with a mixture of horror and triumph thereby suggesting that all three of these men have used the girl for their own ends Giovanni emotionally her father experimentally and Baglioni as a means to show up his rival Therefore, all three men are, in some measure, responsible for her death. That is Rappuccini's daughter. Next up will be Mac Mo Moxon's Master by Ambrose Bierce. See you guys later.